What's up, y'all? My name's Chris Tejas. I am a portrait photographer and brand photographer based out of Kitchener-Waterloo. What we're going to talk about today is how to do my kind of favorite style of portrait work, which is dramatic portraiture. So if you have a really small space and you want to create some beautiful portraits, I think this can be really great. Being able to have a small space that you can control and that you can create images in is really powerful. It, it gives you some agency over the kind of work you want to create. If you want to create more dramatic photos, that's really helpful in a space like this because you really just have to focus in on the person and less of the environment. And so there could be chaos going on all around that person. So chaos, 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 dog being insane, great. But if you can frame just enough of them to get that portrait, then you don't really have to worry about the light and the setting and everything everywhere else around you. You can just focus in on creating and crafting that portrait right in front of you. We essentially did four different styles of lighting and then we shifted within each of those styles. So we did Rembrandt lighting, we did loop lighting, we did split lighting, and then finally we did a butterfly light or a paramount light. Within each of those, we did three different styles. So we did a head on, we did a short, and then we did a broad uh, lighting setup. We're gonna be using the Fujifilm X-H2S that we're filming on right now. We have the Tamron 17 to 70. Most of the photos we were shooting at between F4 and F5.6 at 100 shutter speed and around 200 to 300 ISO, somewhere in there. Okay, so in terms of equipment, pretty simple. I'll show you what we have here. Really simple right here. We basically just have a simple backdrop stand. You can pick these up for super cheap. Uh, this was actually, <laughs> the backdrop we're using today is some curtains that I picked up at HomeSense. Uh, very, very ugly curtains for home, but really pretty as a backdrop, which you'll see in the photos. For the sake of this video, we're using the SL60W from Godox, but our main light was actually a uh, Godox V1 flash just allows us to get more power, allows us to be more consistent with it, not have a bright light shining on our, on our model at all times. This Octobox is what I was using most often for our Paramount or butterfly lighting. We were using one of these guys. This is a beauty dish. Last thing, and this is, I think, the cheapest and best thing you can get, is just some pieces of foam board. What you can do is you can get these in black or you can get them in white, and then the black will help to kind of suck up a little bit of light if you want some deeper shadows, and the white will help to bounce some light. So we used that for a number of different things that we were shooting, and we'll go over what each of those looked like. Okay, so for a Rembrandt style lighting, we have our subject here. We have our light set up on this side on the Octobox. That's at a 45 degree angle from the camera and a 45 degree angle from our subject. So if they're sitting down, essentially, we have it at 45 degrees here going down and it's at a 45 degree angle from our lens. Okay, so this is essentially what things looked like last night. We've got the light at about 45 degrees aiming down at the subject. We had that little triangle patch of light here, which is giving us that classic kind of Rembrandt style. And then it was darker on this side, a little more dramatic, right? This is the basic setup shot. Very, very simple, very straightforward. So from here, we essentially had the model turn a little bit, look towards the camera. This is giving us our broad lighting. So what we're seeing is more light along this side of the jawline, darker and falling off essentially right here. I think it can look really pretty and I actually think it lends itself nicely to doing more fine art portraiture. Okay, so if I was going to do this and I was trying to create something that maybe is a little bit softer, not quite as dramatic on this side, but I still wanted to do broad lighting, what I could do is just pull in essentially a little bit of this foam core. So if I just stand this up right here, so it's out of frame, you can see that we're just lightening things up a little bit. We're still, we're gonna get a little more separation from the background and the side of my face. Whereas if I pull this away, it becomes a little darker, put it towards me, it becomes a little lighter. Can you see that difference there? You could also fill things in a little bit on the bottom by having this here. So if I wanted to create a little more light here, I would just pull this in underneath me and angle it towards my chin and all of a sudden I'm lighting up underneath. So lastly with the Rembrandt style, if we did want to do a little bit more of that short style of lighting, we would actually probably have to move the camera a bit, which is what we ended up doing yesterday. So let's move this over here. This can work really beautifully in film. So if you're actually trying to create some kind of dramatic portrait lighting for a video, this can work really, really nicely because it's almost like backlighting. So this is our short, we did the bra, we did the standard. This is how we would work with some kind of a Rembrandt lighting. So the next style that we did was loop. Loop lighting is gonna be a little bit trickier to show in the daytime, but I'll throw some images up here and I'll show you how we would achieve that. I'm just bringing our light over a little bit more. So we're at a bit less than a 45 degree angle. We're dropping it down a little bit. 
Now we're not going to adjust the angle of the actual light, but because we're lower, we have shifted that angle a little bit. But right about here, we're going to be able to get that nice lighting on the side, a bit of that Rembrandt triangle, but pulled in a little bit into the lip. And that's gonna be our basic setup for our loop lighting. Pretty simple, loop lighting basically just means that you're taking that Rembrandt kind of triangle light and you are connecting it with this side of the face so that there isn't a complete fall off of shadow along here you're actually seeing that light carry through a little bit. This type of lighting is really, really flattering. You can still do nice dramatic lighting this way, but what it does is it just kind of connects everything up and makes it a little bit more gentle. I would probably do this style of lighting if I knew I wanted to get something that was a little softer, a little more painterly, and I wanted to get a little bit more fall off and graduated kind of change in the shadows so that I could push that kind of fine art style editing. So doing this broad, essentially again, it's just falling onto this side. You are gonna get a little more wrap around than you did before. And then short would essentially be turning this way and bringing the camera to the other side. We won't do that over again because it's very, very similar to Rembrandt. Okay, so our next style of lighting is called split lighting. This is a really, really simple one to set up and I think it can look so cool if you shoot it properly. Split lighting essentially means that you're splitting the light down the center of the subject. So we've got the light coming in at a 90 degree angle with the camera. What that means is it's gonna light this side of my face, keep this side in total darkness. Obviously you can go on either side, you can light whatever side that makes sense to you. You can make this as dramatic an effect or as subtle an effect as you want. You can see here, I've got all this black muslin and it's pulled nice and close. That's sucking up all this light that wants to bounce back off these white walls and that's making it more dramatic. So this is what it looks like if we are using the black muslin there to soak up some of the light. If we wanted to make this more broad, we would probably bring the camera over here so we can do that. If we wanted to make it short, we would come to this side. This would be an example of shooting broad. So we're still achieving that kind of nice cut off here and we're getting a lot of that kind of more dramatic feel to it. Shooting a short lighting setup like this can be tricky because we have our light so close to us and we just don't have enough room right now to be able to do that properly. But I can show you some photos of how we achieved it last night and we'll talk a little bit about how we did that. So when we were doing the photo shoot as well as right now, you can see that we've made a pretty dramatic fall off here where it's quite dark on this side of the face. That split is very, very obvious. If you wanted to soften that up a bit, the best way to do it would just be again to get some of that foam core and bounce light up. So we take down this muslin or we could just put a little bit of this here. So you can see how dark that is and you can see as you bring it up, how light it gets. Okay, so for this last one, I had to take off my hat, which I never really liked doing, but that's okay. Uh, this one is something that is called butterfly or paramount lighting. The idea basically being that you have this kind of dark shadow underneath here um, that is, I guess, the shape of a butterfly. I don't know. It creates this kind of shadow underneath here. It can be a little tricky for us to do in this setting right now during the day because there is so much ambient light. But the idea being that it sculpts the cheeks a little bit more, it makes a dramatic fall off here, and then you do get that kind of nice lighting on the top, which is what we're looking for. It can also add some really interesting catch lights when you're taking the photo, which we'll, we'll show in the photos. A quick side note here is that when you are positioning your model, you really want to think about the fact that anywhere they look is going to be way more dramatic when it's through the lens. And that changes pretty dramatically what you see in the white. So if we want to create a photo where the subject's face was looking this way, but their eyes were looking at us, you can see how aggressive that is here. Like you can see so much white and that's that, that can be a lot. So what I found is that basically half the distance that you think you should use. So if I wanna create something where my model is looking away from the camera with their face, but towards the camera with their eyes, I might position them, instead of positioning them like right here at the lens, I'm just gonna turn them about here and have them look at the lens now. So what that does is it creates a less aggressive angle for them to look at and it just makes it way easier when you're in editing to not make it look like they are like giving you the like. Hopefully that shows you that with a small space, not that many tools, not a big budget, you can achieve some really dramatic, beautiful photos and you can build out your portfolio at home if you want to. Realistically, you could achieve 90% of what we just did using a softbox, one flash, a bounce, and that's pretty much it. You don't really need much else. You, the backdrop's a great thing to have. You don't need it. You could just use a wall. You could throw a sheet up. There's, there's so much you can do and 
You can do so much in post with a background that it's really not that big a deal. The biggest recommendation I would have would be figure out how to control your light because that makes it so much easier. When I was shooting these photos, my camera was consistently telling me I was underexposed and it's true, I was, but that was purposeful. That was with intention because I knew I wanted to create a dramatic photo. I also know that using this camera, I can pull the shadows up a fair bit without kind of compromising too much quality. And so I knew that in order to get the look I wanted, it would be way easier to underexpose a little bit, get those more dramatic shadows than having to do so much of that work in post. Okay, so I hope that was interesting. If you'd like to see a deep dive on how I would then go and edit some of these photos, let me know in the comments. That would be really cool to do. I have five or six little things that I do that I think really help to shift it from being your average kind of like cool dramatic photo to something that really stands out. These are not my own tips. These are things that I've built up over time by watching other people do things, by reading, by learning how to use the tools. So I hope that was fun. I hope it was interesting. Thank you so much. If you want to follow along, please subscribe. Please let me know what you think in the comments. I'm really loving making these and I appreciate you very much. All right, peace. Thank you.